I have past experience in the field of Christian-themed media. From TV to movies, from books to games, the big man upstairs inspired creatives from around the globe to create, and growing up I saw a lot of it. Now, the bulk of religious media, especially when it comes to things made to entertain a younger audience, is terrible. At least it was when I was growing up. Remember Captain Bible? Yeah, that game was more concerned with shoving Bible verses down your throat than actually being a fun game, which is why it was not a fun game. Instead of pieces of media that are also fun, that have religious elements, most of the time it comes off like a Bible study with a bit of entertainment thrown in there. Enter Catechumen, a Christian-themed game that I didn't grow up with, but one that demands everyone's attention, no matter your religion or lack thereof. What is a catechumen, the first paragraph of the manual asks? Well, apparently, during a time when Romans were persecuting Christians, new converts had to study for a full year under a mentor before they were allowed to be baptized. We've just made contact with a Christian mentor and have begun our journey towards full membership in the Brethren. If this is all sounding too religious for you right off the bat, just give it a second. Trust me, it's the setting, it's the theme, we gotta get invested first. Developed and published in the year 2000 by Enlightening Software, haha, <laughs> very punny, Catechumen is a first-person game in a 3D environment. Our goal is to journey into the catacombs of Rome and rescue imprisoned Christians who are being forced to, you know, hang out with the devil or whatever this is supposed to be. We begin our quest in a walled garden where a large key sits atop a stone bench. This, oddly enough, is our first challenge. How do we pick up that key? Is there a button for it? Should I press control or enter? Maybe I'm supposed to pray to somebody? Oh, 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 wait, you just jump. It turns out that we have a pathetic little jump at our disposal. <laughs> The garden connects to a courtyard where we come face to face with two terrifying guards. What are you looking at? 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 The gate to the catacombs is off to the side, and after we open it, we're immediately greeted by a bright light and a... <laughs> buff angel? Bold catacomb. This action to defy the evil one is not without risk. His demons have possessed the minds of Roman soldiers. This torso-heavy spirit is one of many that have been sent to help guide us. I love that they took so much time to design his character. Of course his legs seem pathetically small. Who needs walking when you have wings? And I'd like to see you hold two giant swords with your arms stretched out and not get completely ripped. Anyway, the angel gives to us a sword which we hold in a normal fashion. That's usually how people do it. Now you're probably thinking, a sword? What, am I gonna run around and cut people in half? Of course not. This is a Christian game and violence is never the answer. But Ian, you're shooting people with a sword. It doesn't make sense, but it still seems violent. Well, actually, I'm activating the sword of the spirit and cleansing opponents of demon possession, so suck it. Snarkiness aside, this game came out at a time where violence in video games was a hot topic. According to Wikipedia, according to Enlightening Software's founder Ralph Bagley, it was hard to secure funding for Catechumen until after the Columbine Massacre in April of 1999. Since the shooters played violent video games, non-violent gaming projects became more appealing to investors after the shooting, and this is clearly not a violent game at all. There's just absolutely no way to draw parallels between playing a game where you shoot a man with a gun and playing a game where you shoot a man with a sword. Snarkiness aside, aside, this game is instantly better than I thought it would be. The whole idea is that you're wandering around the catacombs, cleansing the guards of their demon possession by shooting your spiritual energy all over them with your mighty blade. Even though they appear to be armed with a sword of their own, all they really seem interested in doing is running right at you, trying to grab you. If one guard gets a hold of you, you lose some health, which if you run out of, results in a game over. The guard then holds you in place for a small, awkward amount of time, and if a second guard swoops in and gets his mitts all over you, you're done. <gasps> Oh, my God.
Since the guards just charge right at you, if there are two in the same area, things can get a little bit chaotic. I mean, if one touches you, you're pretty much done. Luckily, their intelligence is minimal at best. After spotting you, guards will more or less run directly at you, which means it's really easy to get them stuck behind walls or even tables. Why are we guarding this place? The guards don't die when you shoot them with your sword, they just drop to their knees and begin to pray. Because remember, this game is not violent. Most levels revolve around locating these oversized keys and using them to advance through the stage. Some levels require you to retrieve various other objects to advance, but it's pretty much the same idea. To gain more health, you pick up scrolls, which also offer you Bible verses, which you can read if you'd like. I don't know how you guys are feeling about the game's visuals, but I actually love them. I wasn't too optimistic in the first area, but once you get down into the dimly lit catacombs, it can actually be pretty atmospheric. Silly at times, yes, but if you cut the game some slack, it's not too bad at all. I mean, it would help if this giant sword wasn't taking up like a fourth of the screen, though. It's not even a cool looking sword. It stinks that I don't know why, but the guards are always talking about how they have gas or how it stinks down here, most likely because of all the gas. That lousy food in the garrison is giving me gas. My guess is that they're just light-hearted and silly additions to prove to you that this game is not violent. Well done. You are worthy to continue. Your eyes and ears shall be open to the spirit, and I shall grant you my sword. Oh. Oh my. As you complete levels, angels show up and grant you swords of varying powers. Even though most of the weapons you get are swords, none of them you actually use as a sword. You use every weapon like some futuristic gun. That lousy the first one has unlimited spirit ammo, I guess, but the other ones are limited. It is very bizarre picking up ammunition for a sword, especially when the ammo just looks like more swords. That's a lot of swords. Oh my god, what is that? Somebody save me, buff angel, where art thou? Along with demon-possessed guards, you also combat actual demons. The first time one of these fell from the ceiling, it legitimately scared me. I was not expecting it at all. The tiny demons shoot at you with their yellow demon bullets. I don't know. Then there are also these freaky dudes that just roll all over the place. Look at these guys go. <laughs> I consider myself average at FPS games, maybe a little bit below average, and I think this game is pretty challenging, even on the normal difficulty. The enemies are just so fast, and you pretty much have to always be moving during combat or you'll die, which I actually ended up doing a ton of times. Sometimes health is abundant, but other times it's practically non-existent. Although later on in the game, I started finding secret health rooms, so it is possible that I was missing some things. Outside of non-violently shooting demons to death, there's occasionally a bit of platforming. It usually doesn't go very well. Remember our pathetic jump? <laughs> Along with segments where you have to make precise jumps to get to where you need to go, which are at least somewhat entertaining, there are these sections where you have to push and pull boxes around to make stairways to higher ground. The first time that I had to do this was tedious at best, and then every time after that it was kind of like, is this just the only puzzle they knew how to program? It's not even a puzzle, really. A positive memorable moment, however, came in the Colosseum level. There's this hardcore music and a lion roaring, but no lion. It's super disappointing. As I worked on completing the level, I was actually kind of angry. But then all of a sudden, there he is, there's the lion. Apparently, when you use the power of the Holy Spirit on animals, they die. I killed like three lions. I guess that settles the debate on if all dogs go to heaven. Nope, none of them do. Sorry, Clifford. I mean, he's gotta be dead by now, right? Thank the Father. You've saved me. 
So now the question remains, is Catechumen a good game? Well, I didn't beat it yet, but I am confident enough that I want to play some more someday that I said yet at the end of that statement, so that's something. Honestly, I really wish I had just selected the easiest difficulty when I had the chance. I replayed a bunch of the game and got even further on the second easiest difficulty, but to change it down again I'd have to start all over, and I really just think I need a break before I do that. The game is not unknown though, so if you'd like to see more, it's out there. On top of Let's Play series, the game also showed up this year at Awesome Games Done Quick. I didn't watch too much of these because I actually want to keep what I haven't seen a secret, but what I did see looks largely like more of the same, though that's not necessarily a bad thing. Catechumen is not a groundbreaking FPS by any means, but it's probably the most entertaining religious video game I've ever played, and you don't need to be religious to enjoy it, you just gotta be okay with a religious theme. You'll get preached to a little bit, but just consider that the price of admission for a game in which you run around and shoot the crap out of lions and demons with a sword. This is mild animated violence at its most mildly animated. You can't miss this. It might not be the most polished game, and it's not going to be winning any gameplay awards, sound design awards, or any awards really, but in my eyes, Catechumen makes up for it with goofy angels, stupid AI, and <laughs> it's just silly, okay? It's silly and fun and I liked it. All that to say, I had a great time with Catechumen and uh, I hope that if you are inspired to go out and try it yourself, that you have a great time as well. A big thanks to my buddy Clint from Lazy Game Reviews for giving me this game. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Be sure to check out his channel. If you like classic PC gaming, you need to be watching his videos. It's pretty much required viewing at this point.